The March stats for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are out, and there's some pretty big changes. Great Tusk now has 57% usage in OU. Take notes, Landorus. The pseudo legendaries Baxcalibur and Hydreigon have risen up from UUBL to OU. The two fire types, Torkoal and Armor Rouge, have also risen up from UU to OU. Grimmsnarl, best known for setting up dual screens, has fallen down from OU to UU. And now that Chiampal has been banned, Scizor usage has dropped, and it's also fallen down to UU. We also now have the brand new PU tier, with big threats like Skullville and the Sunsweeper, and and a bunch of strong Quiver Dance Pokemon. So let's take a closer look. We have a ton to talk about today. We have the usage stats, we have the brand new PU tier, we have the Pokemon that rose up and the Pokemon that dropped down, as well as how that affected each individual tier. So if you do enjoy these type of videos, make sure you let me know as always by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Feel free to put this on in the background while you're doing whatever you have to do. And let's talk a bit. So first off, Great Tusk rose up even more it's at 57 percent usage i believe last month it was at 54 percent usage so the homie is rising higher and higher and this pokemon kind of feels like like snorlax for me in gen 2 or like lanterus in general though i believe it has more usage ever than lanterus ever had and basically it's not overly broken at all right it's not nobody's seen great touch like damn this mind is impossible to deal with ain't nobody thinking that at all but it's just so good, and it's, I, man, I'm, I, I, I always say this, but I cannot stress enough how much I love that a form of Dawn Fan is amazing, because I think Dawn Fan is a very underrated Pokemon. Um, so it's at 57% usage. Uh, it's going to be interesting, because when Pokemon Home comes out, obviously Lanterns will come back, but Lanterns is, like, you know, it's not itself. It lost Toxic, it lost Knockoff, it lost Defog. Whereas this homie has Knockoff, has Rapid Spin, so there you go. As Ice Spin or Smash Landers and things like that. So it's interesting to see how if they'll both work together or will actually end up happening. And of course, if Pokemon Home ends up giving the moves back to those Pokemon. I know currently they've lost those moves. We see Golden Go still holding it like strong at number two. King Gambit at number three with 30%. And if we just take a moment to compare this to last month's stats, look how much King Gambit has risen up. From 18% to 30%. A lot of people are using Terra Fire from Volcarona, Skeledurge, it hard walls Volcarona, unless it's like Terra Ground um, for Skeledurge. And also it allows it to smash Skeledurge without having to worry about Wisp or Unaware or any of that. And also Terra Dark is being used more too. I've seen Terra Fairy with Fairy uh, with Terra Blast Fairy, excuse me. I think that King Gamut's rising up even more. Um, GM pal basically isn't there to scare it with Sacred Sword and whatnot. It's really interesting to see these changes, right? Like Garg has fallen out of the top 10. Corviknight still managed to be top 10. Iron Valley and still in the same exact place. Dragon Knight has actually fallen uh, fallen down quite a bit. And I, I mean, it's a good Pokemon. It should be on damn near every team. Ah, no, it shouldn't. It should be on the majority of teams though, but it's not the giant threat that it was like day one, day two, in my opinion, right? Or like day 10. I don't... I think it's very hard to consistently sweep with this Pokemon, especially because Volcarona's run bulky Willow is sets now, and, and just in general, Rotom is really there. It's loves that Ro I love that Rotom is going higher and higher, and also it's interesting to see Garg fall a little bit more. Uh, a lot of Covert Cloak was used because of SPL. A lot of people are using that on Golden Go now even more. I know Amoongus and Toxpix are also running it. So while Garg can still sit on them if it's Curse and whatnot, it's also not as mandatory because it was a good GM foul check. And that's kind of like not available anymore. And then we see uh, Dragapult wasn't in the top 10 last time. It snuck up all the way to top number four. And this is really because Chiampao was banned, right? Chiampao, uh, now Dragapult can run modest choice specs and be faster than every Pokemon in the tier. Before, it needed to run Timid and it could still be Ice Shard and Sucker Punched by Chiampao. But because it's main... Uh, and this is another reason why King Gambit's also risen, right? Those two are b basically because of each other. So, uh, Chiampao gone, Dragapult rises up, King Gambit goes up too, uh, because Dragapult rises up. So I think that's a really interesting thing to see. We see Hatterene there as well, crawling back up. Hatterene is used on so many different teams, whether it be Sun or Balance or just Offense in general. So it's really interesting uh, just to see these, uh, just to have this comparison right here. Um, Volk obviously being what it is, Rotom finding its way to number six regardless of having no paints, but it's amazing that Protect is just really good. And you could even argue that Protect is better in a metagame where people can Terrastalize, right? If I can see who my opponent becomes, I can I can just Terra uh, accordingly. Uh, I think it's also interesting to note that every single starter has once again made it. Uh, Greninja's at number 24. Greninja's really good. Specs Greninja is very, very good, especially on Rain, outside of Rain. Um, Quackable's still barely making it, right? Barely, barely making it to stay in OU, but it's still there. Uh, I, Glamora, my prediction for Glamora was hell off. 
Uh, I see a lot of high ladder, basically storm zone teams. All of them have Glamora, so maybe that mod never falls off from OU to UU. Um, and then another thing is Miascarada has risen up to uh, number 12 on the list, and it's interesting to see this Pokemon be currently the best starter, right? In OU, which I think is really interesting. And, and the main set doesn't even run Protean, right? Unless it's Choice Band, it's not running Protean. It's almost always running Overgrow, and you run either Focus Ash or Heavy Duty Boots, typically Heavy Duty Boots, and it's just a uh, very easy knockoff U turn, you know, Flower Trip Spikes, excuse me, Spikes, or if they don't want to run that, you can see it as a lead on offenses with uh, Taunt and Focus Sash, and of course, Banded is really good too. Um, with knock, U-turn, flower trip, and then you can run thunder punch for Corviknight. But I also personally like sucker punch a lot right now, just because it allows you to deal with Dragapult. So this mon being up there is really, really nice to see. I love that's uh, being so good. And I think another thing to compare is that if you look at the usage stats one more time, we see Backscalibur number fifteen, and right here we didn't even have Backscalibur in OU. You know what I mean? Like Backscalibur was UUBL last gen and this time it's well we'll talk about it in a sec that it rose, rose up to OU uh, and I'll actually show out the stats but it rose up to OU and I think people are finally realizing just how insane the uh the choice band set is like choice band back Excalibur is absolutely insane right you just tear a dragon and get a kill uh being able to basically be an auto water rotom because you don't worry about willows because of thermal um uh, your thermal ability and then uh, you're a decent check to Volcarona. If you, if you tear a dragon, you are an answer to Volcarona, right? Because you resist the fire and you get an attack rage. And you also resist the Giga Drain. Uh, and you have the strong ice shard. So it's interesting to see. It's, it's a strong balance breaker, right? We were kind of lacking that ice type. The second champ got bam. And then back Scalibur was like, yo, hold on. I got you, bro. I got you, bro. So another cool mon to really see uh, rise up as well. And I think we'll look at the uh, Pokemon that actually rose up to OU that we'll talk about for a second. Uh, but you see right there, I talked about Backscalibur. I just, I just mentioned like Choice Band Backscalibur being amazing. Uh, Dragonance is decent too, but I mean, Backscalibur Choice Band is the best set, right? Thermal Exchange for Choice Band. You know, it's it's very, very easy to use. So you use Glaive Rush. You got your Icicle Crash. You got your Earthquake and you got your Ice Shard, right? And you want to run uh, Jolly because you're faster than Golden Go. And also you want to be able to speed tie with Great Tusk. I have timestamps down below. I don't know if I said that, but I have timestamps down below for everything I talk about. So... This whole me went up to OU for good reason. Dragon Dance, uh, Loaded Dice is okay with like Chili Reception Slow King, but if you want something out of your back Excalibur, Bandit is basically the set that's gonna do the most for you, in my opinion. Now, Hydreigon also rose up to OU, and I've been seeing a lot of people run this set for like uh, teams with like Clodsire and things like that. And that was sets with, and you can see right there, it has 34% usage, so it barely made it to OU, but it's still OU. Um, it's substitute, a nasty plot, dark pulse or Draco meteor and flash cannon, uh, with Terra, uh, Terra steel typically. Um, and the reason it runs Terra steel is because even if it doesn't get a sub, like it doesn't have to run sub if one, like Hydreigon lost roost, it lost defog, right? You got stealth like this gem, but it got rid of everything. Uh, you could also run top, but you could even run like this with Terra steel and you beat Clodsire because if you Terra steel, you're immunotoxic. Uh, it can be a switch in. It can be with Terra Steel. It's also a check. You can also run uh, Fire Move on it or Earth Power. I've seen Earth Power as well uh, over Flash Cannon. Just Flash Cannon is just cool because when you're still stab, it's just strong versus Hatterian and things like that. Guard, non Terra, and things like that. Um, so cool to see I Dragon uh, rising up. You don't see a lot of Scarf in my opinion. Uh, you might see a little bit of Specs, but I think that the main reason is the Nasty Plot set. We need the Sub or uh, Shed Tail Pass to it. Orthworm continue its rise in OU no matter what, right? Even with a spotter ban, Shed Tail is actually on the recent survey, uh, and it might even end up being banned at a point. But I know this is running around a lot of sets, and then Sub is also running around on a ton of sets, and it's, it's solid. It's a solid Pokemon. Uh, and then we have, if you look at the stats, um, Armor Rouge and Torkoal rose up. So let's talk about Armor Rouge. Now, the reason Armor Rouge rose up is because of this one team that is running around all over the ladder, right? It is literally running around all over the ladder. And uh, let me know if you recognize it just based on what I'm typing. But you got Armor Rouge, you got Ndidi. I, I think it's female because it has whatever. You have Ndidi. Uh, usually you have Poltergeist. Poltergeist. You got Espeon on it. And then your last two are kind of like 
dependent on the team. Some people run it with Sash, Great Tusk Weed, and some people run it with Life or Volcarona. Um, but this is Sash, right? This is Focus Sash. This is Focus Sash. Uh, this is Focus Sash. Some people run it with Hatterene as well with a Jack button over Espeon. Um, and uh, it goes it goes back and forth, right? And this is Focus Sash. Sometimes it's Espeon, sometimes it's Hatterene, so it goes back and forth. But it's literally this team that was from SPL, I believe, that is running around on the ladder a ton. I, it might be an RMT. And basically, it's Focus Sash, Armor Rouge, with weak armor, and it has Expanding Force and Armor Cannon. And I think Energy Ball, I don't know whatever the move it has. And I, I don't know what else it has, I'm gonna be completely honest. And whenever I fought it, it usually dies immediately. So, uh, but this one set is running around, and this is a pretty big thing to go to OU because if you look at the usage stats for uh, the entire month of UU, Armor Rouge was number eight in the UU tier. So, Armor Rouge was literally number eight in the UU tier, and that Pokemon is now gone. It had 20% usage almost in UU, and I mean, it, it makes sense, right? It's good versus Tinkaton. If you Terra Fire, you're not going to die to Gengar. Uh, depending on your Terra's, you can live hits from like Sandy Shock, Salamence, and it's just extremely strong with a choice specs. Very, very good in the tier. And now it's uh, gone. So to see that Mon rise up, uh, because literally, it's literally this team that's spammed too. I don't think, I haven't seen any other armor in the ladder. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know if there's anything else that you guys see that, I'm, that I don't, obviously. Uh, but we have uh, Torkoal has also moved up to OU. A lot of Sun is rising in popularity again. Um, and Sun plus Volcarona is insanely strong, right? So one team runs uh, Torque of Volcarona and, and it's uh, it's Life or Volcarona. And it's like Quiver Dance, Fire Blast, uh, Bug Buzz, and I believe it's, it's either Giga Drain or Psychic, right? Sometimes it's Psychic, sometimes it's Giga Drain. But Life or Fire Blast, in the sun modest and it runs modest it can two it ko skeleturge right if it's not like depending on the skeleton set uh if it's fizz death it can two it ko in the sun and with modest life or bulk and those teams will run this uh and also the offensive teams will run that as well um of course you have cinderace performing well on sun too choice band cinderace is really strong on sun too and then just to kind of seal the deal for sun and ou for a little bit right who was just released walking wake and i'm sure it's very little i know it's only been out for like two days but usage is usage right so walking wake usage obviously loves sun loves rain like loves both so walking wake is a beautiful partner with torkoal because the water dragon has a signature move hydro steam doesn't care about sun and uh during sunny day 1.5 tower by 1.5 power and not weaken right so like this mon Sun is, is legitimately great again. Like, it's great again right now. It's actually really, really strong. It's what makes Walking Wake kind of uh, nasty in the entire thing. But it's interesting just to see the OU tier, right? So, like, it kind of sucks that the UU BL went up to OU because, damn, man, I'm trying to start BL Knights with Blunder. We want to at least 15 to eight uh, to 20 uh, Pokemon. But all the stupid UU BL Pokemon either end up OU or Bane. <laughs> Espathra, Baxcalibur, Hydreigon. I love them. They're all great Pokemon, right? Very honest Pokemon, especially as Spothra. But there's <laughs> some people that don't catch my sarcasm. And um, it's really it's really interesting to see the comments sometimes. Uh, so a few other things that are really, really big, right? So you see, um, let's let's move to Yu Yu real quick. Uh, also, actually before we move to Yu Yu, uh, overall I, I love walking wake in OU. I think that in on sun and um, on sun and rain is when it's the most powerful. Outside of that, it's it's good, right? It's not it's not incredible, but in sun and rain, it's incredible. Specifically, sun when you get the Pearl of boost. Booster energy sets are good too, but I think literally sun just because you get the special attack or the speed boost, depending, right, for free. So I think sun is when it's at its best. Rain, it's really good too. And then besides that, it's just a good Pokemon with some decent natural stats. So uh, let's look at from OE to UU now. Let's look at the drops, right? So we look at the OE rises. No, let's look at the drops. Scizor and Grimmsnarl have dropped down to the uh, UU tier. Now, if we look at the uh, the OU tier, uh, Grimmsnarl had usage because Shedtail and uh, Cyclozar and things like that. So it's been it's been a minute, but mainly it was mainly there for a Spother spam too. Um, so I think it makes sense that it probably just barely fell off, right? There's not a lot of Pokemon now in OU. 
Uh, there's no Chi Hen Pao that can Swords Dance up. Uh, there's no Espatha that can Calm Mind up. Obviously, it was at its peak. Shetel's Cyclozar has been banned for a long time, right? But it's at its peak with that. It's still good with Orthworm. But now in OU, there isn't as many Pokemon that can just straight up be passed to and set up and win, right? It was better in that metagame, in my opinion. So I think it, I think it just barely fell off if it did fall off. But it's going to be fantastic in the UU tier. Just because, I mean, it's dual screens, right? I've used dual screens more grim in UU. And UU has so many good setup moms. Nasty Black Gengar, Swords Dance Tinkaton, though Tinkaton typically runs a more defensive spread. Um, and then you have Dragon and Salamence potentially, Swords and Talonflame. There's this Tyranitar that can tear. There was Iron Hands, but it got banned. Uh, there's just a, there's a lot of good Pokemon UU. In fact, if we actually look at uh, this, let's put this away and put this one back up. If we actually look at the UU tier and just look at setup and what appreciates, uh, what appreciates it, right? You got SD Bisharp, Combine Espeon. Um, it's just a good dual screener. Obviously, uh, there's other prankster mods in the tier, but yeah, it's it's just it's really strong. And I mean, there's some there's a good chunk of setup in this, uh, especially because Scizor has fallen. I think the Scizor fall has a lot to do with it as well. Uh, Champal, Scizor, like you know, they went hand in hand. Uh, Scissor was really strong during the Chiang Pao metagame because it could bullet punch it. Uh, and now it just continues to kind of just um, not be as used in OU. I don't think it's bad per se. But when Volcarona is one of the top Pokemon, same thing with Rotom. And you can't really deal with them unless you Terra Fire and you still take a lot. And then what are you going to do when you Terra Fire? You're gonna terra I guess Terra Blast can work if it Terra Grasses. Um, and it hits Golden Go too. Thief was actually used. But you see Volcarona out there, right? You you see uh, Golden Go. And depending on the Scissor set, can't beat it. Rotom. Right, bulk up great tusk beats at 1v1. Skeletor's is up there too. Like, it's just not in a place to stay in OU, so it ended up falling off, uh, at least in the tier. But doesn't mean it's not a bad Pokemon. Uh, in terms of UU, though, I mean, I look at Scizor, right? You, you, you peep Scizor and you look at all the UU usage. Tinkaton, checked. Gengar, checked. Salamence, checked. Slytherin, checked. Uh, Dawn Fan can be SD'd up on, but you gotta be careful about earthquakes. Tyranitar are checked, so like it, it's gonna have a great place in UU. Uh, it's gonna be good, and sort of typically does end up in the UU tier. And I, I think it's gonna be a very, very strong Pokemon, especially because Dual Screen is up there. I think Swords and Scizor looks amazing down there, especially because it also has Trailblaze, so you can't even use means of like Quagsire to stop it because it'll just SD and then get Technician boosted Trailblaze. And one of the Pokemon that might actually use it, right? I, I talk about Trailblaze all the time, but only Heracross really uses it. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see. So, and then we have. Uh, from RU to UU. So look at the UU tier. Uh, so from RBO to UU, we have Lycanroc. Great, it's a fantastic Pokemon, especially with Terra. It's amazing. Um, but the big one is from RU is Espeon. And this is a huge, huge thing because Espeon was the number one Pokemon in RU. It just lost, they just lost their best Pokemon. And the reason Espeon was number one is because Specs was so good due to Terra, right? You become a uh, Terra Fairy, and you have, uh, not only do you beat the dark types that try and beat you, uh, like Weavile and things like that, but uh, and Crocodile, which is number two, but also you have Fairy Stab on Dazzling Gleam, and Icebeon is hella strong, right? Like, it's very strong. S Spec Psychic is very good. It's Baby Gardevoir, basically, when it Terra's. Um, oh, stronger, well, not stronger, but faster Gardevoir, excuse me, when it ends up um, terrestrializing. So, um, and the reason I, I don't say it's strong is just because Dazzling Gleam versus Moonblast damage. Uh, there's a big difference in that one, right? Like, obviously, this is base 130, so it's it's strong as hell, right? And, and Gardevoir is only base 125. But I have to run the Calx immediately off the top of my head. But I'm fairly confident Broken Moonblast versus 80 base, 95 base power Moonblast versus, like, 80 base power Dazzling Gleam. <laughs> there's there's a big difference in power there if it comes off the Specs Pokemon. But the difference is Magic Bounce and you're fast, right? So Espeon has just moved up to, to Yu Yu. And that's going to be a big change for the, the RU tier specifically. Now, RU did get a whole bunch of Pokemon, right? So that's that's huge for that's huge for UU um, for that. And then RU is obviously going to change just as a whole. But like I said, RU just got a whole bunch of Pokemon. So um, let me tell you what happened, right? You see you see Drifblim. Uh, Drifblim, well. You see, what is wrong with me? Barrascuta. I was thinking Basculin and said Drifblim for whatever reason. Ba uh, Barrascuta, right? You got Barrascuta right there. You got Floatzel. You got Kilowatcher. You got Tauros, Paudia. Water Aqua Combat? What the hell? What is that? What's the official name for that? Tauros Paldia Aqua. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, the water one. What do those all have in common? 
they all work on Rain. What happened to Rain? Pelipper moved up to OU. So what does that mean? All the mons that were spammed in UU now get used in the RU tier. And honestly, they look pretty freaking good there. Barrascuta and Toro specifically. So um, thing about RU is it already had uh, Toro's Blaze, which was a pretty solid Pokemon. But now it has Toro's Aqua, which does the exact same thing in a sense, right? Like it can still check the Weavals and things like that. Uh, let's look at this super quickly. Um, like it can still check uh, a Crocodile, Weavile, uh, to an extent, Hariyama, and things like that. Tatsugiri to an extent. Um, but still loses the slow roll type of thing. But it's just a solid, solid overall mod. It's actually probably a little bit worse uh, than Toro's Fire, just because Fire Stab is really strong in this tier. Um, yeah, Fire Stab is very strong in this tier. I do like Kilowatcher though, because if you look at this tier and you look at their ground types, right? Let's just run through the ground types in this tier. We're still looking for ground types. You got Palisand, which does not eat Hurricanes, right? Specs Hurricane is insane. I love that. I love that uh, baby baby Nachi right here is uh, down here as well. I think that's pretty cool. You have Mudsdale, which will not eat Hurricanes. You have Crocodile, which will not eat Hurricanes. What I'm basically trying to get at is it's going to be. Uh, and um, Colossal isn't a ground type, and you can also switch on. Uh, oh, Belly Bolt is probably the best answer in the damn tier, uh, besides Blissey, of course. But being able to click like a Specs Volt Switch and Hurricanes with this, uh, I think is gonna be really good because this mon is, is basically it's Jolteon, right? It's Jolteon. So, in fact, if you look at the tier, just to look at it real quick, there are suit is faster. Everything else is slower. Salazzle so might be the only speed tier you might want to run Timid for. Um, but I'm sure Kilowattro can get uh, take advantage of Modest if it really, really, really says, yo, I only want to use power in this tier. And he can definitely take advantage of that. I do think Barrascuta looks really strong, but it just has to be careful about Slowbro. But I can use something like Terra Dark maybe, and that'll, that kind of just gets rid of its only... Uh, my dog's barking one second. So as I was saying, I think that Barrascuta can legitimately get away with uh, Choice Band Terra Dark with Crunch. Uh, just specifically for Slowbro, because besides that, Choice Band Liquidation is extremely strong in the tier. And then you have Close Combat. Like, you have good moves for the entire tier. Um, the Alamolo beat you, like, Alamolo beat you down, and I like that you like that. You can run Aqua Jet as your last move just for Scarfers. Uh, Psychic Fangs can be something for Jigalji as well, if you really want, and Tauros too. Um, uh, Water Tauros as well. So I think that uh, Bandit Bear Scooter can be really good. I think that Rain as just like Damp Rock and stuff, assuming it's not banned in this tier, because I know in previous generations things were banned, not in this tier specifically, but with like Sableye setting pranks to Rain and things like that could definitely work as well. Um, you can even use Charizard and Rain with Hurricane, like legitimately, I don't see why that wouldn't work. And you already have all the tools for Rain. Uh, to work in this tier. Floatzel is going to be interesting. I honestly think that even though Floatzel is stronger than Barrascuta uh, when it comes to uh, moves just because Wave Crash is so much stronger than Liquidation even off of the attack difference that they both have. Uh, it kind of also suffers with uh, beating Slowbro but you might see like some sort of bulk up crunch set as well or just banded crunch too um, to be able to do a little bit of work. And then Tauros, I think Tauros just has Defensively, the same capabilities as Tauros Fire has, and also bulk up sets can still do something with Terra Blast, maybe Electric or something for Slowbro. Um, with like Trailblaze, Raging Bull, some, some combo of those moves could definitely work in my opinion. And then from NUBL to RU, Oricorio Pom Pom has risen. Um, so, I mean, it's. I, I'm gonna be, I'm, I said this, I recorded with Rabia and you, right? I recorded with Rabia some NU, and let me tell you something. Every single one of the Oricorios, may, maybe not the Psyche one, but Ghost, Electric, and Fire are all good and can all do the exact same thing just because of Terra. The fact that they gave this Pokemon Quiver Dance was the biggest blessing. It was honestly the biggest blessing because you can just run physically defensive and take on the best Pokemon in or in you, right? Which was Simeon, or one of the best Pokemon in you. We can actually look what the tiers think the best Pokemon in anyways, right? Number two, there you go. The number two Pokemon in NU, right? You could potentially beat the number two Pokemon in NU. Most of that stuff could just Quiver Dance up and do its thing. And um, RU was obviously a really good Quiver Dancer too. Um, what sucks is that you lost, uh, excuse me, uh, well, NU it was already banned from NU, but it was a decent defogger as well. But I would rather use it for setup, right? But all the Oricoros are really good. Um, and obviously, you know, another BL Knight lost, excuse me. However, NU, and you specifically has gained a few things. For one, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna skip a lot of that list real quick, and let me let me show you. And you, 
Whoops. Well, bombs don't. I, I said I'm gonna skip you. So let me show you fairy types and let me show you Enyu. They don't exist. So the fact that we now have Dash Bun and Enyu, when if you look at the Enyu tier, if you look at the Enyu tier, fighters, uh, there's one. There's two strong fighters right there with Metacham and Passimian. It's so nice. So finally, uh, a physically defensive Dash Bun can, I mean, it doesn't have the best HP, obviously. Unfortunately, I don't know. Damn, man, they should have gave it. Dude, just swap its... Ah, I don't want to swap its speed. Just, just give it 10 special attack and give it more HP. But we finally have a good, um, a good fairy type in any that actually resists attacks. And okay, I, I'm gonna be honest. I was, I was lying to you. I was lying to you. In fact, if you actually, if I actually open this up real quick, there's several fairy types on this list. The number one Pokemon Santa Conda is a fairy type. Copperage is also a fairy type. Um, Metacham sometimes a fairy type. Uh, so there, there's quite a few like, fairy types in Enyu. Every damn mon in this tier tears into any uh, into fairy types because there were no fairy types in this tier to begin with to be able to resist the onslaught of fighting type Pokemon in the um, in the actual tier. So it's really nice to have one, and not only one that's like can tank the hits with a base 115, but also the fact that it can wish pass and support the rest of the tier, which I think is really good. I'm not saying that there were any wish passes in this tier. Um, I believe my homie is right over here, right? Umbreon and Vaporeon were both right there. Uh, but it's just really nice, man, to have a fairy, to have a dark and a fight and resist in an actual Pokemon without having to waste my terrestrialization. Um, yeah, without just having to waste it. And if you look at, uh, so from RU to NU, if you look at RU as well, just as a, a whole, uh, I mean, look at all the top mons and look how good they do versus Dash, but right for the majority of players, Flamigo just tear flying and kills. They, it sometimes runs tear steel, but I mean, it just gets stepped on. So I, I don't think it makes sense where it falls down. I also don't think Hale was just that good, uh, but I think that in this tier, Hale looks really strong and maybe not even just because the Titan's down here, right? So obviously you have Obama Snow, right? And Obama Snow has a Roar Veil and it also gets the buff of because Hale and this is actually pretty big this pokemon has this buff because i'm sure like a physically defensive version of this, or just like a uh, a version of this pokemon that's offensive even can still eat like a, a close combat with a little bit of hp evs um type of thing like and i'm i'm you know what i'm going to put my money where my mouth is and we're gonna go obama snow because obama snow takes every single freaking onslaught from everything in this damn tier so yeah, let's just go scarf the simon how much you do with close combat there you go max hp 81.99 and uh, let, me, let me go ahead and put you minus one. Blizzard, dead, right? Giga Drain into Ice Shark kills as well. So um, we take those, right? So like even an offensive or like a, a, a bomb stuff that doesn't necessarily have to be a Roar Veil, but a Roar Veil is obviously great for the tier. Um, assuming again, it's not banned, which I don't think it is because I don't think they had it. Uh, it Roar Veil obviously opens up so many different things for any, right? So let's look at the, like the big one is of course, Titan just got down there, right? So and Titan is actually, pretty good because it's actually going to be faster than the scarf it's actually faster than all the scarfers in the tier plus two so it's actually a pretty big threat and the fact that Slowbro is are you and so is alan mola makes a big deal there's not too many physically defensive pokemon that can take those hits like chancy can tear into a specific type to take a hit but besides that there's not too like santa con is not going to deal with the ice type even if it becomes a fairy type um only tauros with intimidate might actually be able to take one of it terra waters uh, which is something we might actually see. So I can see maybe the potential. And I think, I already think Tauros Paladia Combat is already really, really good. But see these guys come down. I think it's nice. Uh, Satai not being able to really, sorry, not being able to really deal with half the mons in the RU tier was unfortunate for it. I think it had a lot of potential. But I also struggled when I was using it too in the tier, right? Because you would uh, have to take damage from Bronzong when setting up. It was just, it was just difficult. And T Spec were actually good. and slow broke future side and stuff like that so anyway so this is going to be obviously a strong combo in nu but also just the fact that aurora veil is going to be down there is going to be uh nasty like again let's look at the uh excuse me no let's look at any tier and look at all the pokemon that can set up right so the number two pokemon on the list i mean the number one pokemon can technically set up too but it's not really going to but the number two pokemon on the list Simeon, can easily run bulk up under veil and i think that's going to be extremely strong because that like sub bulk up it already has a high hp stat and high defense stat you're boosting and then just drain punch plus knockoff or maybe even uh drain punch plus terra blast fairy um just because it gives you a good 
secondary move, period. Like, fairy fighting is extremely good coverage. Look at Iron Valiant, right? Fairy fighting is extremely good coverage. So, obviously, bulk up, that is really strong. Combine Dunsparce is also another one that can insanely take advantage of that. SD Bruxish, uh, Belly Drums is Titan. Looking more and more and more. Courtesy Crocolore actually stay in you instead of going P. Um, SD, this le SD Lycan Rock could work too. Um, but I kind of doubt that as much. Toxicroak is a good one because it's actually a fighter resist as well. Bulk up Tauros or Serene with Bulk up type of thing. Veluza can set up. So uh, Zangus, Zoroark, all those. Right, so we have a Wiz Cash, which I kind of went over, but Wiz Cash typically sets up spikes and hazards in that tier. So that's definitely a, a pretty big one for the tier as well. Like it opens up so many more different play styles while also allowing the Slush Rush Pokemon to put in work. And we have Bombardier or Bombardier or Bombardier, however you want to say it. Not bad, honestly. I think the big thing I'm looking at is this base 80 speed tier. Uh, it's base 82 speed tier, uh, which is faster than base 80s like Metacham and Pacillian. So a Scarf set. Scarf set ain't bad with Brave Bird. And it gets the, the moves, right? You got Brave Bird. You got uh, Knock Off. You get U-Turn. You can get Stone Edge for your Rocky Payload. Also hit something like Braviary. The Oricorio types. So it's Choice Scarf and Choice Band don't look that bad. I would kind of compare it. Kind of. Not really. To uh, and it has like good stats, man. I, like, I wish this mod had HP. Um, to like a, a mini like Flamigo in the other tier. Obviously, up, up there had so much competition from a flying type from Flamigo and U turn with everything. But here, that speed tier and being able to also your flying type that also hits the ghost type Rotom for super effective damage and has a knockoff as well. Like, this is a good, I think Scarf has a lot of potential. Um, doesn't face any competition, Bravier, like that specific speed tier. Right, the fact that it is just faster than Metacham and Pissimian goes a long way. So you can definitely do something like this. Obviously, a Taunt lead can work too. Um, like Taunt to stop Glare from Sinaconda and also Stealth Rock, knock off their item, you turn out. Uh, Sucker Punch is also on its set. It does have a Home Clause too, but I think that could work under Veil. Uh, do a Wing Beat as well. Gets Nasty Pop, but I mean, this is not the greatest special attack. I'd rather use Haunch Crow if I'm gonna do anything. Uh, but Rock Blast, Parting Shot around. Um, I legitimately think Scarf might be its best set. Uh, and because Slow Roll's not down here, and because it's easy to hazard stack as well, because they don't have the best defoggers uh, in this tier, uh, you could definitely just do something with that. So, yeah, I mean, this I, I like this mod. It's one of my favorite mods of this generation. I don't know why, and it just is. If anybody could explain to me why it's one of my favorite mods, I'd love to hear your explanation. But that's the Pokemon that rose, and that's the Pokemon that fell down. Now we do have the brand new PU tier, and let's look at it. Let's look at what we think is the biggest threats. Let's look at what is down in PU. So, and for us, Bayonet Bear Take, welcome. You <laughs> get yourself comfy. You've been here a couple generations. Cacturn, I think, is really nice. A spiker and offensive can really work. Um, I really think that Carbonville is going to shine. All right, specifically because bulk up plus Terra. Like, I truly think that's just going to Terra into a uh, Fairy type, bulk up up, Drain Punch, Ice Hammer, uh, Thunder Punch type of thing, and really just put in a ton of work versus any. I think this is a sleeper in the po just not even looking at the rest of the tier, but it has the ability to live hits and it's incredibly strong. We have Hazards from Deli Bird, Duck Shirt down here. Ice Q, welcome back to your tier. Maybe Belgium Ice Cube would be good. Electro with uh, Terra is basically, <laughs> if it's Terra Grass, it's basically a Suede Electro, right? Um, Phalanx, welcome back to your, your PU tier. Hope, you, hope you've enjoyed uh, your little way up in the tiers, but um, obviously set up. Uh, one cool thing about Phalanx is that if you Terra Ghost, you're actually not stuck there from your, um, your move. Why am I forgetting the the damn the name of the move? Um, no retreat. You can actually if you tear a ghost because ghost types cannot be trapped. You're actually not trapped by that. And plus, ghost was fighting is strong coverage. Anyway, uh, Flapple with Terra Grass obviously broken with Choice Ban. Glaceon with Terra Ice has Freeze Dry as Ice Beam can tear ground as well can tear whatever. Flareon lost a few moves. Uh, Go Go I think it's actually a decent setup mon. Uh, Gold Duck I see Gold Duck I see Bear Tick. I could definitely see some sort of, and I see Electro, right? I could, I could definitely see some sort of makeshift rain happening down here in the PU tier for sure, especially because Golduck has Nasty Plot now. Um, so it's actually a legitimate threat in rain. I don't know why I put Nasty Plot there, but it's a legitimate threat in rain. I'm just kind of just going over the other ones. Obviously, Gumshoes can be kind of nasty. Houndoom is an interesting powerhouse that I see down here. 
And there's also Ndidi as well, but Houndoom is a pretty cool powerhouse. Has a decent speed tier from what I've seen. Uh, I, I also want to say that I kind of overlooked it a little, but did I do it here? No, I didn't overlook it yet. No, 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 no. We'll go back to it. But Houndoom, really strong, nasty plot setter. Uh, and Didi, obviously, and Psychic Terrain sounds pretty interesting, too. Jump Pluff Houndoom, some sun could happen. Yeah, Leafeon, Lilligant. Yep, okay, this is it. Houndoom, Jump Pluff, Leafeon, and Lilligant. So, Chlorophyll users, a uh, sun abuser, and a uh, fast Pokemon that can go for the solar, uh, solar beam, sunny day uh, with uh, Heat Rock. So, I think just that uh, rain can work in PU. I think that sun has a place, especially because Lilligant is, even without even without sun, it's, it's high key a threat, right? Because it has Quiver Dance. Who has Quiver Dance and obviously Giga Drain, Sleep Powder, and you can just Terrastalize, right, to hit something. Uh, Terrastalize Ice or Fire can work. Fire coverage would only, and you, it makes you lose your weakness to Fire from camera. Obviously, Earthquake could be a problem. But Fire coverage only misses out on Flareon and Houndoom for the, in terms of neutral, for the most part, looking through everything. Pyroar. Yeah, in terms of neutral, that's basically there was something else I just skipped there, but whatever. You guys get the get the deal. So um, that's uh, definitely sun can work, especially because I mean, skull. I, I obviously glossed over it. skull villain and saws buck, right? So I can definitely see some sort of um, sun teams, manual sun running around, eat rock, uh, and just to be able to set up that sun, and then you get the growth, and you get a couple turns to really wreak havoc. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty big, I think. These are just like, what do you guys think about PU? Please let me know your thoughts down below on how you think the new PU tier is going to be. I'm really, really interested to see what you got to say. Uh, so, that's what Lycanroc, Oinkalone, eh, all, you know, average type of thing. Maybe, maybe Lycanroc can be strong with Terra fighting. Uh, it doesn't have tough claws like the other one, though. Oricorio, both Oricorios, or Paw, and just regular Oricorio Fire are uh, really good with Quiver Dance. So, these guys are probably some of the bigger threats as well. Um, can definitely be anti-sun as well. Fire flying, you resist grass, you resist flying. Uh, a gra you resist grass and you just fire, but with these stats, you're barely resisting it. But it's the big thing is Quiver Dance, right? So you're able to Quiver Dance and boost. And obviously, whatever type you can't hit with this or whatever you're mauling your weak to, you can obviously just Terra into them. Like Terra Grass for fire flying lets you deal with water types, right? So like it's just strong. So I think that with Terrastalization or Ikorio is going to be another massive threat. Might end up being banned from PU. That's... A pretty bold prediction but i feel like it's not that crazy um berserker another mon that's usually down here persian very fast but not that strong uh, pyro seems pretty nasty too like a faster hound doom and the fact that it has you know stab hyper voice uh you can tear a normal and have a stronger hyper voice you can even tear a normal and use echoed voice and echoed voice is uh boosted in power the more and more so echo voice right echo voice starts with 40 base power power increases when used on consecutive turns so you use it and you use it again and because you are using it with um terrestrial edition normal it's you know double stab on it so it gets incredibly power this might be something i end up using right so or try it out too if you guys haven't but um you echo the voice over and over and over it gets stronger and stronger and stronger you got yourself a nuke right you got yourself a nuke and obviously on choice scarf sets that could be crazy with like fire blast hyper voice And then Dark Pulse could work or whatever. From there, Terra Blast is also Stab as well, and it can become something. But I like Terra Blast. I like Terra Normal with this. So I wouldn't necessarily use Terra Blast. If it's on Sun, you can use Solar Beam. So those are just potential options as well uh, from a way that Pyro might be pretty nasty in like in this sense. Uh, Pink Urchin's down there, so Electric Terrain can work with like Unburden. Uh, not a ton of Unburden down here. Let me check real quick. Unbird and yeah, Shrudel and Drifloon. All right, well, nope, that's not gonna work. <laughs> but Electric Seed is a different story, right? You can use Electric Seed on Oricoria. You can use Electric Seed on Lilligan and try and sit up. There's there's a lot of different mods that can at least appreciate that defense boost. I think it's really interesting to see Rapska, a Pokemon with the ability to revive opposing Pokemon, um, be down here in PU. And I don't know, man. At the moment, it's just not. Like, there's some people like, yo, this is one of the most uh, skillless, broken moves in the game. But, I mean, I'm not currently seeing it in the current metagame or any of the other metagames that I'm playing. Right? It was better with Annihilate being around. But I'm not currently seeing it with this at all. I see it. I use it occasionally with King Gambit, but it's not anything, like, super, stupid crazy. To the point where I see people talking about it in, like, the OU uh, or the surveys or just the OU forums. I'm not seeing people talk a lot about it. 
But what are your thoughts? But the fact that they can run Trick Room, right? And there's a few slow Pokemon like Cabramidal. We already went over a Cacturn. Uh, camera all pretty strong. Camera up can obviously Eruption. Terrifier Eruption sounds pretty nasty. Um, so it can Trick Room and it can also set up Revival Blessings for the tier. Uh, is always a good option. It can also Calm Mind and it probably because because the tier has a lower uh, power like level. Uh, I can Calm Mind and probably do things. Same thing with Raichu, right? Like Specs or Thunderbolt. And obviously, Pikachu can do the same thing with Lightning Rod. Uh, or, 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 excuse me, uh, Light Bolt. I actually think Pikachu has a lot of potential, right? Because one Pikachu set that I think is really good, assuming it's still, it's actually legal, but just off the top of my head, like Fake Out. No! Oh, Pokemon Home. But basically, it was Fake Out Extreme Speed with Terra Normal. Like, why can't I find Normal? Man, adamant. Life is, life is sad, man. But it gets better. Tomorrow's a new day, and hopefully Pokemon Home gets announced tomorrow. But uh, it's not. But yeah, I mean this month's strong, right? With the light ball. So uh, for those that don't know how light ball, <laughs> I like how I suggest it. It's attack and special attack are doubles, right? So it's over 400. Uh, it's it's 458 attack, right? With stab fake out and stab e speed. So it is. It's so strong, um, and, and it sucks that I can't use Extreme Speed at the moment. Hopefully with Pokemon Home, I will be able to use Extreme Speed. I uh, I have no idea if that actually happened because I know some moves are not coming back with certain Pokemon. Some moves might be. Of course, Game Freak can change their mind, right? They nerfed Hisuian Zoroark, and then they gave it back its stats from Legend Arceus. So who really knows? And if that's the case, I'll be using Fake Out Extreme Speed Pikachu with Terra Normal once I can. Um, Cause that's gonna be nasty. I already talked about Swords and Saws, but can be cool. Uh, Skun Tank gets T-Spikes, good absorber as well for them. Slacking, Terra Normal, probably one of the first Pokemon I use. You're probably going to see it, right? Enough time has passed. Terra Normal, Giga Impact, Slacking. That'll probably be the title. And you got all the Billies down here. And y'all already know about Billy. Me, Blunder, me and Blunder, we go way back with Billy. Billy, me, Blunder, Billy go back to the Sandbox. And this Pokemon, this Pokemon hits so hard with Hustle and a Choice Man and Terra Normal, Brave Bird, or Terra Flying, or Terra Normal, Double Edge, Terra Flying, Brave Birds. Hit incredibly hard. You can also obviously use Guts and Intimidate and, and Sheer Force, I guess, if you really want to. Uh, Stantler looks interesting. I'm not 100% sure if a Violet works on Stantler just yet. I think it does. I think it does. Uh, if it does, it's cool. Um, Stone Journer, nice rocks. Sudowoodo, nice rocks. Subflora, nice sun. Swala, hello. You're okay. Uh, Vivlo and the Quiver Dancers always look. I'm sorry, Tropius. I didn't mean to go over. You're very good in random battles. And I'm sure maybe even Dragon Dance with Terrestrialization, right? Like, you already have Dragon Hammer and, and Earthquake and Leaf Blade. Maybe... Do you still have Dragon Hammer? Maybe if we Terra Dragon you. No, you don't have Dragon Hammer. Damn, dude! Why do they be taking everything from every damn Pokemon? It's so annoying. Doesn't matter. You just Terra, like, Fire. With... Or Terra Flying, even. And probably actually putting some work with this Pokemon. Probably being strong. I, I skimmed over the Rodents, but they're obviously really good, too, just because they're speed tiers. Uh, Nast Spot with Heavy Duty Boots has really always been good on Rodent Frost. And Terraing, obviously, can see that. But the Vivillons are pretty crazy. Or Vivillons are pretty crazy. Uh, because Quiver Dance is obviously an insane tech, as always. It's always good and good. And the fact that you can Terra to give you... I can definitely see Quiver Dancers from PU being banned. Right? If you look at the PU tier... Very little special walls. Very, very little special walls. There's no Colossus down here. There's no nothing. There's, in fact, there's barely any special walls. So, Quiver Dancers will probably end up being banned because there's not a lot of priority either that can also deal with them. So, I'm assuming that would be PUBO at a point. Uh, and then, of course, you have Wigglytuff or Stealth Rock and dual screens if you want to. And then, Walk Trio can get some sort of choice ban. Um, triple uh, Dive set. In this tier where there is less of a speed... You know, there's less speed to run around with. Because actually, if you go... You don't need to go that. You can definitely go Adamant. Because 339 is enough. And there's not a lot of bulky water right there. So 339, right? Take a base 120. Is there anything fast in this down tier? Besides Electro, which is already naturally fast in you. Jump Pluff was one thing you can't even touch. So who cares about that? Persian... Is 115 or 120, so that might, eh, might matter. I don't know. I might just put on Adam and Choice Band on this boy and click the triple dive, like for real, for real, for real. I think that has a lot of potential. But that's PU. That's the tiers. What do you guys think? Some teams on my small profile as well. I'm definitely playing it. Uh, I like PU. 
Uh, oh, because it kind of feels like there's like the super whack mons and there's some like busted mons for sure. But uh, let me know your thoughts on it. I'll see you on the next one. Leave a like, subscribe. That's it. Peace.